do martial arts. So tell us a little about that, how you got into it, and then where do you see that going in the future? Do, is it called? We have UFC here. I don't know of what you guys have. Is that, Do you guys have that too? So UFC is like a championship, so it's an organization. Mm-hmm. UFC is the company, so, and that's like essentially the best arguably the best company for it in the world so if you're the ufc mm. champ then you're like the best fighter in the world but we we also have that because it mm-hmm. stretches over the whole world but we have a lot of different organizations as well but yeah i i never played no i i never did martial arts when i was like young young I played rugby from the age of probably like seven or eight until about 18 i don't know i to me it's kind of like a team martial art in a way because i, d- I don't know if you know anything about rugby but it's i actually it's do like, do you okay yeah my husband plays rugby currently <laughs> oh, okay yeah so he's played you know since how... high school so i know a bit about it <laughs> yeah so i don't know to me it's like you form that line and that's like the unbreakable line it's in a way kind of like a team wrestling sport mm-hmm. where it's like i don't know you're not crossing this line and but then i started doing boxing when i was like 15 and then did that for a couple of years and then went back to rugby and then started doing mixed martial arts like in general i've not really looked back since then i'm just really enjoying it uni's good i've now I've now actually signed up for, it's called a white collar MMA fight and it's completely free. You get eight weeks free training, which is one of the reasons that I'm doing it because I'm a student and I have no money. You get eight, eight weeks free training and then you have a fight at the end of it and all the money that's like you put a page and all of the money that's raised goes to cancer research. Um, wow, that's yeah. amazing. What's the school that you're training at? Well, it's, I think it's at this place called Taobon, which is actually like the best MMA gym in all of England. And it has three UFC fighters coming out of it, which is pretty crazy. I don't know how much you know about martial arts, but that's that's very high up. Maybe name the the people that you're talking about, because maybe some of the listeners are into it. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Darren Till, uh, Tom Aspinall, Mike Grundy, if anyone knows their names. But like, even if you're at the bottom of the UFC, like rankings, you're still like really good. And the fact that they've got like three fighters in there, two of them are like near the top of their divisions. It's it's really big, but it's different coaches because it's like an outside organization. And I won't be training with these UFC fighters because they just start have different times training or whatever. But it's it's like a, I don't know, it's a good gym and they've had a lot of fights come out of it. I don't know, it's quite hard to juggle because I've started a lot of different societies as well through my uni and I've like different martial arts as well. So I've done Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, Karate and boxing so far. I want to keep them up because it's through the uni and therefore I make a lot of friends mm-hmm. that go to my uni. But then it's like the days that are training and now I'm doing this event. So I don't really know. Wow, you are a man of many passions. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot to juggle for sure, especially that you just started university and you're just getting your feet wet and you're already plugged into all these things and training yeah. at a famous UFC gym or martial arts gym. So where's this fight going to be and where can people find you if they want to help support the charity for cancer research and where can they watch this fight when it goes on live? To be honest with you, I have no idea where it is <laughs> and <laughs> where you can watch it. <laughs> um, I'll have updates on my Instagram, but that's that's where I'll probably put all my stuff. I might put it on my Facebook, but I don't really use Facebook at all. I just have it for like group chat. Do you mind if the viewers find you on Instagram after this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's okay. Sam R one C E 
So it's like Sam Rice, but with the one, it's the I. I like it. I like it. So everyone keep updated because like I said, it's TBD to be determined for now. We don't know the time or location or who you're fighting yeah. even, right? Yeah, no. I, like I've not started training yet. I start training next week, I think. That's exciting. So this this yeah. gym gives you eight free weeks of training. Yeah. And all yeah. you have to do is be in a fight at the end of it. Yeah. And then what's and you know, what happens, raise money. Yeah. And get some experience yeah. under your belt too. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you know what happens after that? Do you continue fighting? Do you continue training? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't think you'll keep training with the same organizer or group i really don't know i don't know if there's multiple events i'm definitely going to keep fighting and keep training i also want to have a boxing fight because the boxing society at the uni is, seems pretty good and there's a lot of other people there that seem like they're quite good which for me means better sparring and i do want to do that and it means that i can represent the uni and like i've done I've done a lot of boxing in my time. I'm a very confident boxer. So I think if I can, I'm just going to juggle that and have the other fight. If I get ready for one fight, then I'm going to be ready for the next fight mm -hmm. as well. So like, I don't really mind if they're close together. Like for me, martial arts is actually reasonably safe compared to rugby at least. Because mm -hmm. I grew up with rugby and rugby is all about being as heavy as you can and then running full speed at someone else who is probably heavier than you. And it's just so much uncontrolled weight. A lot of the time it's like two men tackling one person. There's scrums, you know, scrums mm -hmm. where it's like all of them together. And if you're like in the middle of all of that, people get paralyzed all of the time because it's just dangerous. It's hard, it's hard to keep it safe when it's so much so many people on the pitch really whereas in the cage or like a ring it's one-on-one -on -one and i can watch everything they do and i can control it i don't know it seems less safe but i actually think it is safer i guess that makes sense i guess when you're watching when you're watching a fight on tv you see all the bloody noses yeah and eyebrows and blood everywhere so it looks kind of dangerous but you do yeah. have that one opponent versus in rugby it's <laughs> a whole field of really heavy guys running at you yeah and i can attest to that every my husband has rugby practice twice a week and he has games on the weekends and every time he comes home he's just a mess yeah. like every time i'm like what did, they, what did they do to you this time like you're yeah. always coming home to me broken up Literally. And he yeah. has this huge bruise right now on his arm because someone had stepped on him. So you can see the cleat marks. And then. <laughs> yeah, and then no, his that, honestly, that's swollen. one of the worst ones. The cleat marks and then his pinky is boots. swollen. He's like, people keep stepping on my hands at practice. And then his ankle is swollen. And like when you're in the scrum, your ears get chopped up. Yeah, cauliflower yeah. ears. Yeah, cauliflower ears. So luckily he doesn't have that yet. But yeah. he usually plays center. Oh, okay. But right now he's playing, I forget what it's called. He's Right now his coach is using him as one of the big guys, even though he's not one of the bigger guys. <laughs> so he's in the back of the... Maybe a flanker? I'm not sure. Is it on the side? Is it the back side he's the or one the back that's, middle? Yeah, maybe. He's at, He's the one that's like at the very back of the, the scrum and like pushing. Yeah, or is that's it number eighth. Eighth, eighth man. That's, that's the one. Eighth. Eighth, yeah. yeah. So he, that's what his coach is using him for now. But he's one of the most diversely skilled players. So his coach mm. will put him in different positions. And yeah. rugby is not a huge thing where I live in El Paso. So... There's not a lot of people that know about it, so his team's not that yeah. big. It's through the university as well. It's not a huge team. And a lot of the players are new, like this is their first time playing rugby or even hearing about yeah. it. So his coach is using him because he has more experience. So he's using him 
in like all of the positions basically because he's yeah. versatile yeah. but typically he he likes center because he's more of a runner mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but right now they're oh, using him as one of the eighth men where you have to yeah. push and you're heavy and even during a lineup he was the one lifting a guy that was oh, okay. heavier than him he was lifting yeah. a guy that was like 40 pounds heavier than him i'm like this doesn't make sense like why did they put <laughs> you at the yeah. bottom <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's the position I used to play actually. Number eight. Oh, really? And you're yeah. not like huge either. <laughs> no, you don't, honestly, like, I don't know. You need to know rugby really well to know how big you need to be for each position. Like, mm -hmm. all of the back row, you don't need to be that big. It's more about being like really strong, mobile, and good at tackling. And even being able to like be a back when you need to fill in for like the centers and the wingers and whatever. Okay. Yeah. Luckily, he hasn't gotten too severely injured yet with rugby. I'm praying. Like every time I watch a game, I'm like, don't touch him. Like, people do not touch him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like just always nervous whenever I watch a game. But he gets beaten up during practice well enough, but usually he plays the center. That's his ideal, yeah. I guess, because he likes to run and move. But in American football is where he's actually gotten severely injured. Mm. So you would think it's the opposite because in rugby, there's no padding. There's Yeah, but that's out. what makes American football so bad. Exactly. Because of the padding. And it's not padding. It's just like hardness. What's it even made out of? Is it just hard plastic? Or I like... think so, yeah. I mean, you have a yeah. helmet, you have yeah, yeah. the pads on you, and the times that he has gotten severely injured was when he was playing actual American football. Mm -hmm. Rugby, it's very intense and it's very rough, but I think because you're not wearing helmets and padding, you have to be a little more cognizant of the way that you're tackling someone or the way that you fall down. Yeah is from what I understand yeah. it, so. Yeah. Well, there's a lot more rules. Mm. Well, not not more rules, but rules in the sense of, like, if you tackle someone, you can't tackle them above the chest, really. Okay. Whereas in American football, you can just come and clothesline someone, can't you, out of nowhere? Yeah. Like, most of the time in rugby, you're just squeezing people's legs. It's, it's more like wrestling, sort of, take and get on top of them, sort of thing. That's why you said it's like a martial art to you. Yeah. A yeah. team martial art. <laughs> That's cool. But, I've never yeah, looked I'll, at it that way. <laughs> yeah. It sort of it reminds me of like a Viking shield wall. When you're all together and you're like, they're not getting past this line. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It sort of reminds me of that. Yeah. I love the haka. Did you ever do the haka? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I learned it. I don't know why. I think I had to learn it for school or something. But I, I remember I learned it all. I might even be able to remember it. So like kamate, 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 kara, kara, kamate, kamate, kara, kara, tengata, tengata, huru, huru. I don't know. <laughs> Where does yeah. that come from? Is it New Zealand or That's New Zealand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Maori, and it's I like a war it. dance. Yeah, it's like a tribal war dance before yeah. every rugby game. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah. It makes it so much more fun to watch than American yeah. football. Just yeah. the whole vibe of it. I love the war dance in the beginning of it and just the lineup, people throwing really high. And yeah. Yeah, it's a lot more exciting to me. Yeah. I'd love to go to New Zealand and watch rugby because in England, like, it still is a big thing in England, but like, Pretty much the one sport that everyone loves in England is football, as in soccer for you. Soccer. And like everyone, if you talk to someone, it's always about sport. The first thing someone's going to ask you is like, what football team do you support? Something like that. Whereas like in New Zealand, it's like the opposite. And it's like rugby is the number one sport. And then I think the next most popular sport is like martial arts and stuff like that. Hmm. That's so cool. I love learning all the different quirks and intricacies of every culture yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next 
year, like next fall, 2022, August, I think, my husband and I are supposed to go to Tokyo for a rugby tournament. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. So he, cool. it was supposed to be Finland this year, 2021, but that couldn't happen because of COVID, like all of Europe is still closed. So they ended up changing the plans to do Tokyo next year. And it's going to be a rugby tournament with, I guess, the local teams in Japan. Right. So, so that'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, it's booming in Japan now. Probably like 10 years ago, they had hardly any rugby in Japan. And then now, like, they beat, they beat South Africa in a World Cup a couple of years ago, oh. maybe more than a couple of years ago. But like South Africa are like one of the best teams in the world. And I remember yeah. that being like a really big thing for them. Yeah. Because I yeah. know the Springboks won, I think, last year or something. I didn't know yeah. that Japan had beat them. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 They're trying to make it a, a bigger thing over there in Asia, China as well. They have cities that have their own professional teams now. Really? Mm -hmm. so they're trying to make it more of a culture in asia yeah it's really cool to yeah. see <laughs> i think it's a really good culture to grow up as as a kid because in england because we've got football soccer and then rugby as well they're probably the biggest two team sports for the boys in general a lot of the time you can tell differences just because of the different cultures like in football there's this massive hooligan culture where at football games they get drunk and they get in massive groups and then they go and fight the opposition team and they'll have their <laughs> group of hooligans. Um, whereas in rugby, you would never get that really. Like Obviously, you'll occasionally get fights, but like this is like planned stuff. Like every single game, they go there to fight this other group. And I think that's to do with the culture around it, but also it's like, rugby is such a physical game that if you're angry at somebody you're not going to wait until after the game and punch them you're not going to punch them on the pitch most of the time you're just going to in that next tackle you're just going to put everything into it because like you can hurt them and sort of get your own back whereas in football you just can't so it really does i don't know it does show especially like the fans of teams it's like an organized thing for a lot of people to just go and fight. That's crazy. I never heard of that. So football slash soccer hooligan culture. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, watch a, a film called Green Street. Green Street. Yeah, that it's a good movie as well. Yeah, I don't know if I've heard of that in the states. Like hooligan <laughs> teams yeah. fighting each other. I mean, yeah. fans of teams fighting each other over yeah. soccer teams in America. But it makes I sense. know Russians do it. Honestly, like I thought it was a thing in England. Like if you're a bar at the pub, if the pub then closes, everyone will wait outside and wait for fights to kick off because that's just a thing that happens. And I thought that was a thing everywhere until I started <laughs> traveling and talking to other people. But I don't know where it's come from. I guess it's just a thing set in English culture that people just like fighting each other. They just like fighting each other and fighting yeah. outside of pubs after drinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it comes from, but yeah. So more about English culture and all that. I'm not too familiar with the different areas. I know there's different accents. Like London, there's an a English accent, and then there's different accents in other areas. I guess what would yours be considered? And then would you be able to speak in the other region accents or not? Are you going to make me do some bad accents? <laughs> I mean, I'll try my American ones, but I'm not very good. Like, we have, like, the Boston yeah. accent where it's like, Boston, yeah, it's like, you left your car keys or something like that. I can't really do it very well. Yeah. And then there's, like, the New, New York accent where it's like, New York, New York, New, yeah, New Jersey, like, Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not very good. And then there's like southern accents. There's like Georgia. There's Texas, Louisiana yeah. accents. Like, yeah. So there's like all kinds in America as well. And I kind of have like a mix of a Hispanic accent because where I live, I'm right right on top of Mexico. I'm I live in a border town, so people mm -hmm. say that, that I have like a Mexican accent. <laughs> really? <laughs> so Maybe like a Mexican 
American accent. I don't know, but that's yeah. So I'm the same you way. Don't like, sound I know there's... At all. Right. Yeah. It's just where I'm from. There's certain things like we say in El Paso, like we say like you mm. know, or we say ay ay. There's like certain things. Oh, right. Yeah, but that's like the same with me. Like in England, I know there's different regions and different accents, but. I don't know. Yeah. If shoot your shot, try them. <laughs> okay, so you've got like, are you familiar with like a Scottish accent? Yes, and it's how it's yeah. different than so, an Irish accent. Yeah, so you've got the south parts of England is where you've got like the proper English accent, where I probably sound more southern right now as well because I'm trying to pronounce my words better. Do you know what mm. I mean? Whereas, for example, better. I'd just say better mm. and stuff like that. When you get more of like a proper, well-spoken person, do you know what I mean? Like okay, that. Southern the, part the classic of England. English accent, generally, yeah. And then you've got where I'm from, which is the Midlands, which sounds like me. People say that I sound like I'm from Birmingham, but like there's parts of my accent that, that it's different a little bit. But Birmingham is more like so. This impression is simply. Because there was a, at rugby when I was younger, there was a, a a dad who was from Birmingham. So, Johnny, get your bike off the pitch, and that's my Birmingham accent. <laughs> Do you want to um, get your ball off the pitch? That's what I heard. No, it was Johnny, get your bike off the pitch. Get your boy off the pitch. Bike. Oh, bike. <laughs> See? Yeah. yeah. Get your bike. <laughs> Get your bike off the pitch. And then that's like Peaky Blinders. And then and then you've got where I'm at now. Liverpool. That's the... Have you ever heard of like... That's how you say it? Chicken and a can of coke. Chicken and have a can of coke. Have you ever heard that? No. Yeah. Chicken and a can of coke. Oh. I'm from Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool is very different. It's, that yeah. is different. I don't Liverpool, think I've heard anyone. Yeah. And then you've got a Manchester accent, which I can't really do very well. It's, yeah, I don't really, I can't really do that one. But then I'd say the other main one is probably Newcastle. So the sentence, I'm going down the town, which just essentially means I'm going to go on a night out. That in Newcastle is I'm going and done the ton. Okay, so they don't. And that, that's that's near to Scotland. Uh, okay. It's, it's like pretty north. Wow. Yeah. What What's something else in the Newcastle accent that you can say? <laughs> yeah, I'm not like I'm not very good at it. I just know that one phrase. I don't. I don't really know. I'm going down to town. Um, <laughs> no, I'm gunning. <laughs> So it sounds like you're shooting people. I'm gunning. Gunning the ton. The ton. <laughs> Done the ton. Yeah. And it means I'm going out on the town. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. I haven't heard of those. I think I've only heard like Adele. I don't know if that's like London accent or something. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for trying. That's okay. That's that was pretty entertaining. <laughs> there is a lot more though. That's what's really surprising about England is like it's not a very big place at all, but it's like so many different accents. So many. And like yeah. really different ones as well. For me, I can tell a bit of difference between the American ones, but only like the strong difference. Yeah. Whereas generally, mm -hmm. unless it's like New York or something like that, and it's like a really strong one. Whereas I feel like even for Americans, if you heard a Liverpool accent and you knew what a Liverpool accent sounded like, you'd be able to distinguish it. Mm -hmm. Well, now Probably. I know it's Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> now it's I know. a lot more like high pitch. Mm. I don't know. And then you just reminded me now. Now I just remember people usually say I sound like I'm from California. Okay. Yeah, they say I have a West Coast surfer sounding chill type of voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they usually don't um, guess that I'm from Texas. They usually assume I'm from yeah. the West Coast. Yeah, to be honest, you don't sound very Texas 
I don't know. Texans. Well, no, the, the only thing I say is y'all. 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 Yeah. yeah, hey y'all. That's the only thing I say. Yeah. My Texas accent comes out sometimes. That's the easiest one for me, yeah. I think, just yeah. because it's what I've heard the most. But where I live, yeah. my the city that I live, it's kind of, we're kind of not the typical Texas you would think of, like in a Western film where you see the tumbleweeds yeah. rolling yeah, by. Yeah, that's what I'm then, thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And of. the guns and the cowboys and the saloons. Yeah. Do you say you're in the mountains? Yeah, I live in El Paso, Texas, which is right next to New Mexico and mm -hmm. Mexico. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times people think we are in the New Mexico state or we're in Mexico, the country. <laughs> and we're... Is that a state, New Mexico? New Mexico is a state. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I thought it was just a city. No, so there's Texas and then under texas is mexico the nation mm. and then next to texas you have new mexico which there's like four squares it's like new mexico arizona utah and colorado and then you have oh, okay. nevada, nevada and california and all that the west coast so people when you say el paso people usually think we're in new mexico <laughs> but uh. we're actually at the tippy part of texas we have this saying called just the tip <laughs> 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 it is like people have t-shirts and stuff it's like the map the map of texas i don't know if you know what it looks like i don't expect you to I and then know. there's yeah it's okay you're in a different nation so you're you're cool <laughs> <laughs> and then there's so there's the, the state of texas it's like a cool looking puzzle piece looking thing and then there's this little triangle tip part so that's where we're at the very tip is El Paso. That's why we have the, it's called just the tip. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we kind of have a lot more Mexican influence and New Mexican, we have like Tex-Mex, it's like our food, it's called Texas Mexican food. Oh yeah, food. I've heard that phrase. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's more New Mexico as well. So you, it's like love or hate. Some people like hate Tex-Mex and they prefer authentic Mexican mm. food. Yeah. So. That's like where I grew up and where I currently live. So we have a lot of more of that Hispanic flair and that culture. Cause like 80% of my city is Hispanic. Oh, really? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Literally in England, like, I mean, I'm probably wrong about this, but it feels like we have hardly any Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. I know you yeah, guys have a lot of Pakistani and Indian yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of people from everywhere, but, but like not. Hispanic, yeah, not really from mm -hmm. Central or South America. I think, I think it's probably because everyone that is in their countries that wants to go to a different country, they'd probably just go to America because it's so much closer and you can kind of get there by land as well. Mm hmm yeah, that so. makes sense. It's yeah, it's really different here. Like if you ever come, there's off the freeway, which I don't know if you guys call the highway or something or interstate highway. Uh, motorway. <laughs> motorway. Okay, so we call it freeway or highway. Off the freeway, you can see Mexico. Oh really? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah, if you ever do come, you'll see it. You'll be able to see. Mexico across the way there's the Rio Grande River Rio Grande that it's like a huge 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 long river that extends through different states and down to Mexico and it kind of cuts through the border so that's kind of the border town that I live in and then I went to school in Lubbock Texas which is more in the centered part of Texas so that's where you would kind of get that other Texan vibe where it's like right the, the flat plains everything's flat not mountainous where i live and we like where i live there's high elevation there's a lot of mountains and then in lubbock where i went to college it was flat and that's where the tornadoes are and that's where the, uh, the what are the tumbleweeds and yeah lots yeah. of farmland and oil fields and things like that mm. when i think of texas i thought it was a massive desert I thought the whole thing was a desert, but it's not, is it? Yeah, we do have different landscapes. A lot of it is yeah. quite desert-like, but there's a lot oh, of okay. different... Mm -hmm. Like where I am, it is the desert. It's called the Chihuahuan Desert. 
but it's the most biodiverse desert of the world. Oh, really? So, mm-hmm. so even though it's a desert, we do have a lot of vegetation and animals and it's a lot of biodiversity. Yeah. And I love our mountains. We have our mountains here and it's just amazing to be able to drive through yeah. and look at them and see the mountains yeah. every day. Yeah. I don't take it for granted anymore. Yeah. Do you ever climb them? You ever got into rock climbing? Rock climbing? The, um, there are some people that, that do climbing here. I'm not that intense and I do fear for my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't gotten into it. Have you tried it? Uh, a little bit, but mm-hmm. I want to get more into it. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's just something satisfying about just going like, that's really cool. I'm going to go up there. And it's good for like grip strength and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, which if I, I suck at. Cool. Yeah, me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. I'm not really built for rock climbing. I've done but... indoor rock climbing. And even with that, yeah. I struggle a lot. And yeah. I've done outdoors the rock climbing. The grip. Yeah, I have no grip. And then outdoor rock climbing, I did it in Colorado. And I did okay, actually. Outdoors was actually easier for me because you can mm. stick your hand in crevices and hold on to yeah. the boulders versus indoor rock climbing. Those little yeah pads, I just can't grip onto yeah. them very well. So I prefer yeah. outdoor. You but I've never done... As well. Chalk, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have. I did buy some chalk for when I used to do indoor rock climbing. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Does it yeah. help a lot? It does really? help. Yeah, because yeah. my hands get get sweaty and then they'll slip from yeah. the grips. Yeah. So you have to. I would recommend rock climbing shoes, and I would recommend chalk. I used this thing. It was a liquid chalk. I still have it. It's liquid, so you get it. Like it's like hand sanitizer, and then you put it on, and then it dries mm-hmm. on your fingers. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so I prefer that. I would use the liquid yeah. track. Okay. But I've never tried free climbing. That's too intense yeah, for me. <laughs> that's scary. Yeah, or I bouldering. I don't know who it was, but I saw this video of, like, some American guy free climbing this, like, insane, massive, pretty much vertical wall. He was, like, overtaking people as well. He was just, like, going at it. It's, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. No, that's just too crazy. I do know a couple people here that do bouldering. So they will mm. go into our mountains here or drive an hour or two out. We have other mountain ranges nearby too. So there's it's quite popular for bouldering and mm. people come from different places. But yeah. I've just not had the opportunity to do it with people that know what they're doing and safely (laughs) but i will do the belay if there's a belay hook to me i will do it (laughs) but not free (laughs) yeah and then to live in the mountains yes how's the landscape where you are right now is it just city (laughs) uh yeah it's pretty much just city there's a hill i have to climb up a hill to go to uni Mm. that's exciting yeah <laughs> exciting yeah you'll yeah. love it over here if you ever come by let me know and i'll tell you where be. the good spots are yeah i'm sure i'll come to america one day but it's just so expensive to travel there like it's just ridiculous so i need to get some money first really yes yeah we'll have time for that yeah so t- another difference of america and england i was thinking do you guys really drink tea instead of coffee i mean some people it depends it's just a pet it's just like i mean it's like america like it's not like in america everyone drinks coffee is it Do mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah i bet a lot of people drink tea probably more people here drink tea but generally i don't know i have a coffee i love coffee yeah gen- generally i think it's probably been phased out more mm. i don't know maybe because there's more like cafes and there's more there's stuff like Starbucks and Costa and like more things like that. And so people are drinking more coffee. Whereas mm-hmm. like, I don't know, tea, I don't know. I have to be in the mood for tea. Mm. And I really, I really love it with milk and honey, but like, I don't know. I and love that's traditional coffee. with in England, right? The milk and honey with tea. I don't think honey is. I think it's usually, usually you just have sugar. I have my yeah. 
Shroot Farms mug from the office, uh -huh. which is another export from your country, the office. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I just finished watching the British seasons. I watched the American ones oh, first, yeah. and then I watched yeah. the British ones. What did you think of the British ones? I like the American one better. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. But yeah, I don't know. The, Amer no, the English ones aren't amazing. I think there's better things that Ricky Gervais has done. But like, I just can't get past the, I don't know, it, for me it was just because I, wor I watched the English version first and then I watched the first episode of the American one mm -hmm. and it just felt like, it felt like they tried to just copy it all and just ruined it. Um, okay. Oh, well, I think we talked about this too when we were in Costa Rica. Yeah, we did. I How, remember, yeah. Yeah, like you the said, first go episode. You said like season two. Yeah, the first episode of the American the office literally was a, a script copy of the British version because yeah. that's what the I think Ricky Gervais and the network agreed on is yeah. what they would do and then episode two was my personal favorite episode of the entire franchise it's called diversity oh, really? day yeah okay. so season one episode two is called diversity day and that's where the American writers just went and did their own thing well, and they didn't yeah. have to st stay okay. on the script anymore so not that i hated episode one i mean i still liked episode one even though it was a copy yeah. of the british one i didn't mind it. it's still a good episode yeah but you watched it first oh, okay that makes sense you watched yeah. the british episode one first yeah yeah well if anyone's listening i would love to hear what you guys thought <laughs> yeah if no guys... honestly i'll i'll give the office a try again i'll start yeah. on episode two because I yeah. see a lot of funny clips from it. Mm -hmm. Like it's oh, the memes are all over the place. Funny. Yeah. So you yeah. guys listening, I want to know your opinions about The Office, British versus American, and then what your favorite episode is. So yeah. just tweet me or comment on Instagram. But yeah, no, I love season. Okay, I'm, I love all the seasons of The American Office. Some people say just skip season one or, like, get past season one and season two gets better. I still think the whole thing is good. Just episode two, mm -hmm. Diversity Day, is my favorite episode. You have to watch it. But, yeah. yeah, thanks for bringing us that since I know it originated from England. And some people don't even know that. Like, there's Office fans that I talk oh, really? to, and they don't even know that there's, like, a British version. And then I'll uh, tell them, yeah, you should watch it, too. Like, watch both. Yeah. I recommend people to watch both. I still enjoy both. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of The Inbetweeners? The Inbetweeners? I think I've heard of it. What is it about? So, it's, like, it's so good. Like, the English version is so good. And, like, it's over 10 years old now. And, like, you could easily just reference it to almost anybody in England and they wouldn't know what you're talking about. Probably younger people because it's about four lads that are at our college, your high school, and it's it, it's literally just following them about. Like, they made an American version and, like, nah. It, nah. Because it's such, it's such British humour and, like, it just doesn't work. It, like, they just absolutely ruined it. All right. I will watch the British version then of the Inbetweeners. Thing is, I don't even know if you'll find the British version funny. Mm. I don't know. It's it's a hard one because it is it's proper rude as well. Like it's supposed to be like a bunch of young, immature lads like messing about. So one of them just like lies about everything and like goes into quite graphic detail. I've gathered that. I feel like British shows are a little more crude yeah yeah so i'll yeah. see maybe maybe i'll get some of the references maybe i won't but maybe it'll still teach me some things about england yeah. if no, anything honestly, yeah if you want to learn about england it's probably a very educational show okay got it i will it will teach you a lot of phrases okay i'm pretty sure my friend sian will want to watch it too because you know how she's obsessed with england <laughs> yeah yeah she definitely will Oh, yes. And <laughs> okay, so the last thing I want to ask you, I guess, how do things vary in England versus America, like dating customs and practices? And then if you can tell us a little bit about your love life, too, if you're, if you're comfortable <laughs> with it. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. That's quite a tricky question. It because is. I feel like everyone, everyone does it their own way. I guess like things that are acceptable or not acceptable. Here we have like, it's called ghosting. I'm sure you guys have it too. Yeah. We call it airing. What? Airing? No, airing. Like the air we're breathing. Uh-huh. Airing? I-N-G. Airing, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll see. That's something different. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then we call it ghosting. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, I, there's a lot of things that America, like, a lot of people would say ghosting as well. Mm -hmm. It's just, I feel like airing is our own version of it. But people have taken ghosting from America. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. I'm trying to think. I'm not, I'm not really a massive data. I don't know. It sounds I'm like you're more focused on your other pursuits right now. The yeah. fighting and raising money for cancer and the uni and biology and all your clubs that you're engaged yeah. in in school. I do agree with that, but it's also just like I'm not looking for a relationship now at all. Like thing is, when I was growing up, probably from the age of like 14 to like 18, I was like pretty much in relationships the whole time. So I now like not being in a relationship. Something that I've realized from traveling is like, even if I don't actually get with a girl or do anything with her, you can still, I felt like you could still connect with someone a lot better if I was single, because like I found like if I was in a relationship, I'd, if I was getting to know a girl too well and it was like going really well, there'd be something in the back of my mind like I can't really be doing this that much. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I just like freedom. I like only having to worry about myself. Yeah. Also, I, I know now that like if you chase girls, you're not really going to get anywhere. So I'm just going to do my own thing and then wait for it you know what I mean? very wise words i th i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah too many but, people chase it oh yeah that's good advice to impart i think just don't be chasing and just wait for it to come exactly. naturally so focus on yourself and then everything that's meant to be will come your way i love it that's the best way to end the show <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, the, I mean, that makes sense, you know, especially if you're going to be traveling and you just started uni, so you don't want to get yourself mixed into anything. Like yeah. my little brother just started uni as well. And then we were talking on the phone and there's like this girl, he's like, I don't know if she likes me. I'm like, yeah. if she's playing hard to get, like, you don't want that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope he listens to this and realizes <laughs> If, if she's trying to playing hard to get, then he needs to play hard to get and just focus on himself and therefore be more attractive because exactly. no, one wants to, no one wants to go out with the guy that's following them. You exactly. I mean? like, yeah. yeah, and he's got he's got a good head on his shoulders, so I think he'll figure yeah. it out. I'll, I'll send this to him, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, he just started uni too. So I'm like, don't yeah. get yourself wrapped up in anything too serious. Yeah. Just have fun, find out who you are, discover yourself, yeah. meet people. Yeah. So if anyone yeah. is listening that's just started university, if you have any further questions for us or advice, let us know and we'll try to get to you later. But here's a little bit of what we think. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks yeah. yeah thanks for sharing that part about your life and keep us updated if anything changes but older. who knows who knows but it sounds like you're living your best life yeah i think i am yeah i'm, I'm enjoying life right now apart yeah, from you... all the uni work but oh man yeah i'll have to let you go soon so you can go do your homework <laughs> i'm going out tonight oh really I need to go and start drinking yeah it's a saturday night you know <laughs> That's true. I've been out of yeah. college for a couple of years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. But before you go, what is something you would like to hook the viewers up with? I call it the hook you up segment. So just mm -hmm. there's been a lot of things that you've already 
told us about like be water my friend the book and, and oh looking no into you it. know what it was because something that is mad interesting and that everyone should pay more attention to is their sleep i read this book called i think it was called why we sleep my favorite chapter of it was about dreaming and like why we dream and essentially dreaming he put it in a way that it's dreaming is therapy in your sleep so what it does it takes all your memories from the time before this like not not your whole life but say tonight i sleep i'll probably have the memories from the day and what it does is it plays back in this weird order that is a dream like obviously you know what dreams are and that enables you to be able to store the information in your long-term memory without storing the emotion so if you think about a memory general memory maybe not like a really sad one or something like that but general memory if you think about it you can probably picture it think about what was going on whatever but it doesn't bring back the emotion that you were feeling at that time and so that's what it does but then on the other side of it people that have ptsd they can't dream properly about these certain events and that's why when they think about this memory it brings back all the emotion that they felt in the time of the memory does that make okay. sense yeah so basically because i've heard of this too when you're dreaming it's kind of or when you're sleeping your brain is kind of categorizing all the memories of that day into yeah. this is important this is not important and it just kind of organizes it so it kind of makes sense to you but when you're dreaming my dreams are very jumbled and out of order yeah. So I'll be here, and then I'll be there, and then there, this person's here, and then they're not, and then there's another person. Mm -hmm. So I definitely could relate to that, that it just comes very jumbled. But that's the first time I've heard of that you leave the emotions out of your memories yeah. when you're dreaming. Yeah. You're, so your mind is playing back to you the events, but not the memory kind of. that's associated yeah. of the emotion that you're I'm, feeling, I guess, at the yeah. time. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how it works. I don't know if it completely neglects the emotion in that process or if it just plays it back in this order so that you process the emotion properly mm -hmm. and you therefore don't have to store it. Okay. Like in this is why he calls it like therapy in your sleep because it kind of gets you past the emotion so that you don't have to store it. And then it's like, it's probably like a survival thing because if you, for example, were a hunter gatherer and you see a lot, of, no, you see like, I don't know, you're out hunting and you've got a memory of when, oh, I don't know, a deer kicked you when you're a child. If you thought about this memory, it brought back all the emotion that you felt as a child, you'd be on the ground crying. Mm. Whereas instead of that, you store the information so then I can go, okay, that's a deer. It kicked me once when I was a kid. I'm not going to get too close to it. Okay. That makes more sense when you that put it like sense. that. Okay, yes. Yeah. 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 It, it brings back the memory of pain and fear, but not the full emotive yeah. aspects of it yeah. where you're just I mean, overwhelmed and. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, even like what you said there in like pain, pain isn't an emotion, it's like a physical feeling. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you probably process that in the same way as you do emotion because it's like you can think that deer hurt me as a kid, but it doesn't start hurting you okay. in that moment. You don't feel the pain again. You yeah, just exactly, get reminded yeah. of it. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And why... PTSD people, they yeah. have an issue with that where, like you said, the mem the memory gets conjured, but then they also, all of the yeah. anxiety and the pain and the fear, all yeah. of that comes back in, in the full yeah. force. The full at that force, moment. yeah, exactly. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm big into dreams as well. I think yeah, there's a reason yeah. we dream and all that. So what yeah. do you do? Do you journal after you wake up or do you draw or how do you process your dreams to try to pay more attention to them i don't do anything i let my dreams do whatever they want i just the main point obviously that was the explanation about dreams but the main overarching message is just about 
how important your sleep is because you only dream for like a tiny bit of your sleep so mm-hmm. to be able to actually dream you need to be sleeping for a decent amount of time as it is i, I would recommend this book called why we sleep by matthew walker as well as this it goes into stuff about sleeping pills caffeine before bed all these different things that affect your sleep just about how important your sleep is really because it really sorts your brain out i like it i think that's very important to do and then you just reminded me that i know you like to draw you had the drawing notebook when we were in costa rica together i did we yeah. never had a chance to flip through it i wanted to look through oh, it really? and we were always so busy we didn't get too many breaks but i guess if you have time in the future if you have any nice drawings that you want to showcase just send them to me and i'll post them on the gram okay sure because when i was in austria that was the only thing that i could do was draw so i got like quite a few decent drawings done there but to be honest i've been so busy i've not had a chance to draw mm-hmm. but i need to start doing it again yeah, i just never I'm... knew what to draw well i guess tattoo designs exactly yeah exactly yeah things that inspire that. you yeah i'm just curious so i want to see them for myself so send some okay. over to me when you have a few to share <laughs> i will do they're and all at maybe... my house so I won't be able to show you. Oh, back I home. won't be able to take pictures of them until Christmas. Okay, that's um, fine. But I might be doing some more help. I don't know. Okay, and then that way if people are like, I want this as a tattoo design, then when you learn to be a tattoo artist, then you can do that. <laughs> exactly. Well, they thanks so much, England. Sam. <laughs> thank you so much. My brethren from another nation. <laughs> I tried to rhyme it. <laughs> thank you for having me oh my gosh this was so much fun i just love hearing from you we'll have to catch up soon again because i just know you have so much more to tell us maybe we'll definitely do it again i'm sure you will and then once you do get into dating then we can talk about (laughs) you can vent to me about that (laughs) yeah until your podcast blows up and the person that i'm talking about watches it Uh (laughs) uh-oh (laughs) Oops. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more that you're going to travel and there's more things that you're going to let us know about a new tattoo yeah. and then maybe you can update me after your MMA fight and just tell mm-hmm. me how all that went too yeah. good luck yeah. with all that it's in a couple months but just good Thank luck you. with training yeah don't... that's just before Christmas okay so, don't yeah. stress yourself too much with schoolwork and all that just try to enjoy life it sounds like you're like me like you got so many things going on like when i was in college too like i had like clubs and i was in yeah. all these organizations and yeah so just enjoy your time and good luck with training don't get hurt don't get beat up too much and good luck on your fight <laughs> your first Thank fight. You. <laughs> yeah first mma fight first mma fight pretty big deal yeah. Yeah. all right well we'll I'm be cheering you on Thank you. Just to remind everyone, if you could donate to the fight thing that's going for cancer research, that'd be great. And I will have a link to that in my Instagram. And I'll be posting as well to mine. So mine is MFMP pod. And so I'll be posting to my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and then linking to your page as well. So people can know where to follow. Okay. Great. Awesome. Wow. We'll, we'll talk Great to soon. See you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like the podcast, I would love it if you can leave me a five-star review on iTunes. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest at MFMPpod. And consider supporting the show at patreon.com slash MFMP to gain access to exclusive content and bonus perks. And to keep the conversation going, you can tweet me to ask a question or share a comment about what you heard. I would also love to see you post stories to Instagram or Facebook of you listening to the pod or trying any of the activities or recommendations introduced from the Hook You Up segments by my guests or myself. Tag me in your stories or posts at MFMP Pod so I can see and maybe also share along. Until then, stay tuned to hear more from the many faces of many places.